I'm really making a mess of this. Uh, I'm going to start again. My name is Nick Van Prague. Uh, I direct the Ground Truth Program, and, uh, which is really essentially trying to move from listening to, to acting on what affected populations tell us. Um, first of all, some history. Um, if one wants to sort of find gra the sort of the, 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 the ground zero of the uh, accountability uh, movement, which I think it's become, one looks back to the um, operation in Eastern Zaire back in the mid 90s when um, uh, the huge numbers of people uh, crossed the border into uh, Eastern Congo. Um, the uh, evaluation that followed pointed to major problems in that operation, and uh, both in terms of coordination, but particularly in terms of accountability to donors and accountability to the affected population. Um, what that gave rise to was a spate of initiatives uh, over the course of the next 10 years, um, which provided standards, they provided codes of conduct, certification schemes, um, capacity building initiatives uh, designed to uh, explain why you should be accountable and how you should do it. The problem was that these organizations, the operational agencies, continued pretty much with business as usual. And the reason they continued with business as usual was because these people were not included in the mix. The voice of the affected people was really nowhere to be found except as an aspiration. We had a supply side system with no demand side. Ground truth, um, sorry, ground truth was then set up, uh, we're missing a slide, uh, was then set up um, to try and bring these pieces together. Um, and what we do is we listen intently uh, to beneficiaries. We have taken a page out of participatory development processes and out of the customer satisfaction industry, hence the, the title of this talk. Um, what we do from the customer satisfaction industry is we ask few questions, but we ask them very often. We um, then track that data and see how it evolves uh, over time. We don't look at facts, we look at perceptions and we um, score people's perceptions so that we can track those over time and see what difference it makes. It's very important that the data we get is actionable. And the questions we ask revolve around four pillars. We ask about the relationship. We ask questions related to trust, questions related to competence, tr questions related to, um, uh, to responsiveness, trust, uh, and um, competence. We look at services. We look at the quality of services, the relevance of services, um, and the timeliness of services. We try and find a question that relates to the final outcome. And we also look very specifically at agency, the extent to which people feel uh, able to find and contribute to solutions themselves. Um, we have now tested this approach in Haiti, in Pakistan, in Ukraine, and we have operated at scale in Sierra Leone during the Ebola crisis and now in Nepal. And I just want to give you some, some data now. So here's a question we asked in 2013 uh, to people in Haiti. Um, do you feel safe in the place where you live? This is one of five questions that we asked a representative sample of people across uh, camps in Port-au-Prince. Anything below the x-axis is a tendency to disagree with a statement. So in the first round, you can see, when people were asked in this camp run by Concern International whether they felt safe in the place where they lived, the score was minus 80. That was a huge wake-up call. People knew anecdotally it was a problem, but they didn't realize it was this much of a problem. The result was that um, Concern decided to fast forward the relocation program, and within three months, the camp was closed, and people were now living in the neighborhoods. And we went back and did another round with the same community. And what had happened during those three months, the same people, but in a different location, their attitudes, their perceptions had changed enormously. It went from minus 80 to plus 80. And this also had a programmatic implication, because what happened here was that there, was, that there were two pieces to the puzzle, the programmatic puzzle. One was livelihoods, and one was community solidarity. When people were asked, why did you respond so positively, they said, we are welcome, I sleep well in my, in my bed. So part, the, the solidarity program became much less important, and emphasis was placed on the uh, livelihoods program. The next three months later, things were better, and they continued being better. This was something that didn't happen. This is in, this was, we, we proposed doing the same kind of survey to UNHCR in Zatari refugee camp. And this is, this is one way we, um, we visualize our data. Here we would 
proposed using the same question and we simulated this response. I feel safe and welcome in this camp. The dark areas are where people totally disagree with the statement. The light areas are areas where they agree. A Killian Kleinschmidt, who's a friend of mine, was running the camp and he, 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 he thought about this for a long time and others from UNHCR thought about this for a long time. In the end, they decided that they didn't really need this... Um, this, this tool to find out what people think because Killian said, I'm out in the camp, I'm talking to people all the time. But one month later, this was the headline on the BBC, Deadly Clash in Jordan's Zatari Refugee Camp, which I think just underlines the point that anecdotal data is information, uh, is anecdotal information is useful, but actually it doesn't really uh, match up to uh, carefully uh, robust uh, data sets. Uh, we also have operated in Sierra Leone, and um, we had both a frontline worker survey and a citizen survey. And one of the questions we asked citizens was, overall, is the Ebola response making progress against the spread of the disease? This is a classic outcomes question. And you can see here that over the course of four months, from um, December through April, people were steadily growing more confident in the, in the, in the, in the response and its, in its effect on curtailing the spread of the disease. But then you might say, but these are just people's perceptions. Are they really valid? And what we then did was lay this line over the perceptual data. This is objectively verified data from the World Health Organization on the number of confirmed new cases. And you can see it's fascinating because the perceptual data almost exactly mirrors the decline in number of new confirmed cases, which provided additional um, validation, if you like, to, to, to the approach. Just very quickly in closing, I think what we've, the work we've done so far, working with many partners, shows that data collection can be quick and effective. The partners we work with are all local partners. Uh, there are many pieces to this puzzle. There's a communication piece, which is extremely important, and it can be effective, both in informing and influencing the way programs are implemented. What we've discovered is the tipping point with this data tends to come after two or three rounds. One data set doesn't do it. The second one gets you thinking. The third one gets you moving. Very important to track people's perceptions over time. Third, recommendations. The data doesn't give you all you need. It's very interesting that people want to have recommendations based on the data. Even if they disagree with the recommendations, it's a kind of stimulus. It's a spur to reflection. Uh, very important, too, to find very visually attractive, uh, intuitive ways of presenting the data. Finally, incentives. Really important that we have donors who are pushing organizations to do this stuff. And I just have to uh, raise my hat to DFID, which supports probably 90% of activity in this domain. Um, it's very important that we have uh, the kind of support we've had from OCHA in Nepal as a facilitator of this process. It's very important um, that agencies uh, create the incentives for their own staff to, to behave in these ways. And I think our own community needs to be able to put in place, through CDAC and, and other means, um, the, 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 the services which will actually allow us to deliver on this agenda. Thank you. Thank you.